Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Um, as ever, please subscribe. Go to Produce Like a Pro and sign up for the email list and you get a whole bunch of free stuff and information on future competitions, mixed competitions that we've been running. Um, and uh, today we are going to review uh, a new product that's been out for a couple of months that people are really freaking out about. So I really wanted to have a chance to, to do this. So we bought it. Um, I will say, firstly, it's very inexpensive for all of the features that it's offering. Um, it was less than 30 bucks, so it's pretty much a bargain. I have heard, though, um, that it is an introductory price. So we're hoping to get this video up as soon as possible. And um, obviously, that's you know, if it's a great product, let's get over there and buy it sooner rather than later. Um, but what's special about today is I'm going to get Matt uh, Boudreau from Working Class Audio, who does podcasts, um, which I really like because he is coming from a perspective of guys like us that are hustling out there and doing this for a living. So he's interviewing people and finding tips and information um, that can help all of us out. Um, it's hence the title working class audio and I really gravitate towards what his philosophy because that's that's really where I come from I want us all to share in this information I don't want this to be an elitist thing with these handful of guys you know slapping each other on the back this should be about us giving back to all of us and like I said many times before I learn a lot from you so please leave comments and questions below so let's go and check out the plugin the Clang Helm MJUC it offers three distinct types of tube transformer based compressor limiters um it's simulating 50s 60s and modern takes on of those so i'm very excited to try them i've used all of the original compressors many times i own a few of them myself anyway so this is going to be a good kind of like way for me to hear how people are really simulating them and how good they are very excited to try them and then of course after that very excited to talk to Matt and get his perception because he's been playing around with it, with it now for a few days so we'll get to see how he likes it and how he uses it so let's get started I'm excited to try this um, we have a lot of different sources here on the uh, blaming on the whiskey um, Robert John and Rec session we have a vocal here let's start with the vocal this is pretty hot recorded so this, this was using a a tube mic, so it's already kind of driven. Let's have a listen. How you do it lie? How you do is try to deny. How you do it lie? Well, you hear his vocal getting in, actually overdriving the mic a little bit there. Um, so let's have some fun with it. So if we go to our dynamics here and find our, there it is, the MJUC plugin. Now, there are three different plugins here mark one mark two and mark three the mark one apparently is simulating um 50s style older plugins the mark two i believe is sort of the late 50s early 60s uh 176s the predecessor to the 1176 which would be a tube compressor and then the mark three which looks very much like retro compressors, is like a modern version, a modern take on those. Um, this looks very much like a retro to me. This feature down here is pretty awesome. Look at that. We've got the timber or the timbre, the dark to the hi-fi. You've got some drive, clean to driven. We've got a side chain here, which is fantastic. And then so you can use it as a parallel compressor. You've got a dry to wet feature. Now, I hear that this section here is not available on the Junior. So this is a big, a big reason to spend that tiny amount of money, frankly. Less than 30 bucks to buy this at the moment is a deal. So let's go, let's go to the one and let's highlight that vocal. Yep, it's highlighted and give it a listen. How you do it lie? How you do is try to deny. How you do it lie? Now this AGC, I believe, is an automatic gain. So let's turn that on. How you do it lie? How nice feature. So what it's doing there is controlling this game makeup. It's giving us the same level output. That's a nifty feature. 
I think the other day I was trying out some plugins and we were putting them inside of other plugins. And of course, one of the issues is if it doesn't have an automatic gain function or it doesn't have a gain control, which a few plugins don't, you have to sit there and rebalance all the gain of your plugins. So this is something I could quickly open up and try on a vocal with other plugins around it without having to adjust all of my gain structure. So a nice feature. How you do it live? Off. All you do is Put it back on. in the night. Bypass. How you do it live? Great. Even when you know it just ain't right. All you do is lie. Now, obviously, on a vocal like this, a rock vocal, the thing I really want to hear is this drive. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. All you do it live? Even when you know it just ain't right. All you do is lie. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. All you do it live? That's a pretty tasty drive function. Um. I think that's what, what's nice about this is it's not just driving the top end. A lot of saturation plugins have this tendency to just drive the top end and it gets brittle and you're trying to balance it out. That's, you know, this is a really warm recorded vocal, but even then it's, it's maintaining the warmth and it's driving low and top end at the same time. So on a vocal, this is nice. How you do it live? I kind of like the drive being hot. So let's go for this hi-fi dark control. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. All you do it live? Even when you know it just Bypass. ain't right. All you do is lie. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. That's pretty tasty. It's giving me a you know, a tape-ish kind of sound. Um, obviously, it's, you know, it's it's got a simulation of all the transformers that are in this. And, you know, when you these original compressors had a massive input transformer and a massive output transformer, and then a whole bunch of tubes stuck in the middle of there. So there's a lot of different... You've got the second and third harmonics of the tubes, and then you've got those transformers just adding weight to the signal. What I'm noticing is there's a sort of mid-range 6700 1K punch on the original source. How you do it live? I wouldn't call it nasal because it's great, but listen to what How it does. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. It's really warming it up. It's adding some, some nice low mids and it's driving it really nicely. Now, the next thing we could try is the side chain control. How you do it live? All you do is try it in the night. All you do it live? Even when you know it just ain't right, all you do is lie. Wow. All you do is lie. All you do is try it in the night. That's pretty tasty. Um, this, um, when I was using um, on a mix um, an Aerosmith song, I used this kind of idea on the retro. So if we go to something that's simulating a retro, at least for me. Let's try putting that on a bass. So that's fantastic on vocals, really, really tasty. Didn't even get to try the other two, but let's move quickly and try some other stuff. Okay, cool, so let's take the chorus of our bass. The only thing I've got going on this is a little time adjuster just to put my phase in. Um, my bass amp, I'm using it for the super lows and I'm wiping off all the top. So this is the bass with nothing on it. You can tell it's a live recording because you can hear the bleed from the drums into the bass amp. It's a good bass amp. So let's uh, let's open up our MJ. You see? Now I'm going to go over to the Mark III because this is, to me looks like a simulation of what I've used on Tom Hamilton's bass, and I'm going to try some of the same tricks. So. Let's have a listen. Turn on our AGC. It's definitely rounding out, soaking up some of that top end. Just a little bit. I can darken it.
Go to the hi-fi. The first thing I hear is that cymbal bleed coming into the amp is really reduced, so you can see how much it's darkening it on that. Obviously, it's bleeding through it a little bit more. So you hear what it's doing on the top end. There's not a huge amount of top end on that sound. Let's drive this. Now, as usual with driving it, some of that clean, low, round, round bottom end has disappeared a little bit for me. So let's try the side chain. So it's going to let that low end go through without being compressed. Let's compress it more, and let's take the recovery to its fastest release time. Density. Oh, that's nice. Change the ratio so it's going to get more into limiting. Before. That's pretty crazy. Um, you know, I think the bass honestly is, is well recorded in this instance. So I'm quite happy where the unprocessed sound is here. It's quite natural, you hear the fingering. However, this is the way that bottom end is coming out. That could be a great use on, on sort of thinner sounding basses because this side chain control is fantastic. So what it's doing is letting those lows and low mids pass and it's compressing the top and above and then folding it back in. Um, it's a very nice control. Like I said, when I was mixing uh, Tom Hamilton's bass, we tried to recall this in a real, uh, we took photographs of a, of a retro, which is the, like, it's, it's what this is probably somewhat based on. It's a Gates compressor and they've made a modern version of it with variable attack and release times to sort of modernize it a little bit. And we didn't recall it exactly and we had this slightly on the wrong side and it was very hard to tell in the photograph. And the great thing about plugins is they will recall exactly. So the bass sound was hugely based on using the, a sidechain function. So that's a really, really nice idea. But you could also go crazy. We could do this. So that's pumping. And then use a parallel. So you're blending a... Try this. Before. After. So that's a very subtle way of just getting that low to just kind of keep coming through. So getting a little nutty on the compression, but then using it as a parallel compressor in, you know, in one. This is a, this is a great function that a lot of, lot of compressors are adding now. It's a really good idea. It saves you setting up a parallel, you know, now taking another instrument and doubling it or sending it to two auxiliaries at once and compressing it in two different ways. They just give you, give this to you in one. Really nice. So yeah, that's great on, uh, on the uh, bass there. Let's hear the one. A little too driven using the same kind of sounds. Two. Now there's this HQ function here which is like high quality. So let's see what it really does. I'm gonna go back to full wet so we hear the compressor.
I don't think it's a hi-fi enough sound source to hear a huge difference. I think it, it will take on a lot more processing. And, uh, you know, I think using that function could be good. I could go up to my processor. It might limit the amount of plugins we get to use. Let's try this on um, some drums, last but no means least. Okay, let's take our Coles mono. I have a Coles mic set in front of the kit, pulled back. So it's like in a kick drum position, but it's of quite a few feet back. And there's no processing on it at the moment. Let's put the MJUC on it. There it is. Let's experiment. I'm gonna go back to the Mark III. I'm going to darken it to see if I can take out some of those symbols. Oh, I love the sponginess it's doing to that kick. Let's drive it. Auto gain on. No high quality. Oh, nice. This density control apparently brings in a second very mu tube stage. So it, let's see what it does. Before, nice, very nice. Love what it's doing to the kick. Oh, I like that. High ratio. Oh, that's great. Okay, that's so uh, that's fantastic. The uh, schnitz and snickles is here in our drums. In. So. It's great. It makes that Coles now into like an energy track. I love that. Okay, let's try it. Let's just go over to the Mark II. So it's keeping the same settings. Good trashy sound now, like that. Definitely more modern. I love the way that snare's spanking. Big pumping kick, spanking snare. This kind of reminds me of the way an Altec would sound, to be honest. We can put this on limit. I like this. The timing is very Fairchild. These are like very Fairchild looking knobs. On a Fairchild, I always use it on the fastest. Probably be there. That's great and trashy, very Altec. And this is very gate slash retro sounding for me. This, having used the, the, for me having used all the real uh, things, this would remind me more of a fair childy 50s kind of compressor sound. This is trash, well, at least for this, it's like a trashy Altec, and this reminds me of the, the new retro stuff. A lot of controls that, uh, you know, modern kind of controls that you'll get um, you know, with a modern Verimu, you know, tube compressor. So great, we're just scratching the surface on this. Let's go and have a talk to our friend Matt Boudreau at Working Class Audio and see what he thinks about it. This should be fun. I'm sitting here with my friend Matt Boudreau. I think I pronounced that right, didn't I? Yeah, good enough. That'll work. This is great that we're getting to talk on camera because I have a million questions for you. 
Um, we oh, had no. a, uh, we had original purpose. Our original purpose, and I, I do like, is that we got both got to try out this plugin that's been out for a couple of months now. That I've seen a lot of people raving about it, and it's the Clang. I could get this wrong. The Clang Helm MJUC. Is that correct? Right, and then there's the junior, the the free version. Yeah, I didn't get to try out the junior just because we we ended up buying the other one. So I'm assuming, you know, because the other, I think in euros it worked out like thirty bucks or something. I mean, it's cheap. Yeah, I think it was like twenty seven and change. Wow. On on PayPal after I was all finished. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. It's a it's a good plugin. The 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 hype that. I've been seeing with different people reviewing it is pretty well deserved for something that inexpensive. Um, what did you think? Um, my initial impression, uh, the free version, I will say, uh, I thought it was okay. And I, I didn't, I, I, I thought, well, maybe if I get the full version, it'll unlock a lot of extra features. And I was, I was right because when you right. get the full version, you you're getting three plugins, really three different compressors, three different generations of, of very moo, uh, style compression. And right. I, I don't know, man, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm trying it on everything and see wonderful what it works on. I mean, for me, and you probably have this similar experiences, uh, for me, it's like opening it up. I said to Connor as I first opened it up, I was like, this is, this is like the retro, which is obviously the gates. I mean, when we were mixing, um, uh, excuse the name drop, but when we were mixing Tom Hamilton's bass, to get the warmth out of it, I, I used the retro with the sidechain function, and it was mm -hmm. insane how much that worked because there's a point, I think, and I'm guessing, but I think the retro only goes up to like three or 400 on the side chain where the M the MJUC actually goes up to 600. So that gives it, yeah. that could be really useful for certain guitars where you're not going super low, but you want to add a little bit more roundness on the low mids. So mm -hmm. that made that more flexible than the hardware version. But what I like with, when I had Tom's is like, there was a point at like 270 and just, it just brought the bottom end and the low mids to life. I remember when we did a recall on a mix the bass wasn't sounding that good. And I go over to the retro and I'm like, that looks the same as the photo, you know? And then we just nudge the knob like a nano, whatever. And suddenly the whole low mids just came to life. And that, you know, I first open up the plugin and Connor leans over my shoulder and hits the B button at the bottom and boom, the other feature came, came out. And yeah. that's where it came to life. And is that not in the junior? No, that's not in the junior. So the junior is a much more stripped down version, and you don't have that, you know, like that dark and hi fi control or right. the, or the, uh, I think it's a density type, type uh, control, just makes the compression behave a little differently. Yeah. But, uh, and the I found drive that, is great. Yeah, the drive, that's what it is. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Um, it's it is really cool because like for example I was trying to get uh, a female vocal to sit with some very kind of chunky uh, Americana electric guitars, and with that hi-fi dark feature you can really just kind of it you, you can not only control the um, uh, the dynamics of the whole thing but you can kind of tone shape with those things so like I Wonderful. can get the guitars to be a little little bit darker than the female vocal so she could sit like right you know right. in in there it's it's nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. It, it's a it's a good sounding compressor. Now, obviously, there's three different compressors in one. Yeah, which is pretty scaringly good. It it is, and and like I think my favorite is the is the, I, he designates them by MK one, two, and three. Yep. And I found that I think my favorite out of the three of them depend. You know, and obviously this will depend on the program material, but I found like the uh, the MK one was my favorite. It was the most colored. It was the most, um, I don't want to use, you know, the warm th words, but it was, it was the warmest. It was the, the most sure. like tangible, uh, thing that I, that I, out of the three. Yeah. So like, if you, if you get your setting and you like it on MK1, you can kind of, you know, click through MK2, MK3 and sure. hear those. But once again, as usual, it all depends on what you're putting it on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the last one we were playing with, strangely enough, Mark Three. I kind of liked, but I think that's because that was the one that most made me feel like a Gates compressor. 
Mm-hmm. Um, maybe what it is is the modern take is probably closer to the retro because the retro takes the features of like the Gates compressor but kind of modernizes it. I really like the using the retro hardware. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, so there was a familiarity in all of them. I, to be honest, I was never a 176 fan. I, when I go to Sunset Sound, they have them. They've probably had them since you know the 50s or whatever. Um, I, I always found them a little soft, a mm-hmm. little. You know, but what is great about this plugin is all the modern features, especially when you get to the ability to have attack and release controls. Mm-hmm. Because with the attack and release controls, you don't get any real tube compressors that release that fast. That doesn't exist in the real world. There's no, I love Fairchild's, everybody does. When you walk into a studio and you see, see a pair or whatever, you go, oh my God, there's a 670, we freak out. But we use them. Um, sonically because they make things sound better and i know that sounds stupid to say but we don't use them as much to compress now that might sound stupid but i might put my overheads through it when i was at united i put my overheads through it and the needle was barely moving and it yeah it tucked in the snare out of the overheads a little bit and just kind of folded it in lightly but it wasn't so much that it just and i hate that everybody's going to criticize it but it did warm it up because there's huge transformers in there Massive transformers, and there's tubes that not only distort on the top, but they distort on the bottom to those people that don't understand that. So they, they, it did warm up the whole mix. Um, there's something about those massive transformers and that enormous amount of tubes that love. But I couldn't use a Fairchild or an original Gates or an original 176 or even an LA2, a 2A. I couldn't use those in a modern setting to record a vocal personally. Mm-hmm. because I need a faster release time. I need, I can't have a guy go, ah, out of nowhere, and then just suddenly have it squashed so that it completely chokes and goes, ah, and chokes. <laughs> because that's what happens when you use an old-style tube compressor. Um, the, the release times are like, you watch the needle, it kind of goes this, and it kind of goes, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? The release is coming back so slow and you're like, oh my God, the whole next phrase is just completely annihilated. So, it's in, I'll so what's tell you, great about this, this go, plugin go ahead, yeah. is that those modern features. Well, and, and one thing I want to talk about is there's a uh, like a tool tips feature on there that I think that if, um, to get familiar with the plugin, if you turn those on and you scroll over the, uh, the various buttons, it will come up with a little paragraph that explains like this button does this and it explains like the routing of, you know, it puts, you know, this transformer in the circuit and, you know, involves this. I found that very helpful because I was like, well, what is, what does this really mean? What, What is this thing doing? And that explains it really well. The other feature that I don't know if you caught up with this, but, uh, the GUI can actually be viewed in very small or very large, uh, settings, which is really great. So, like you That's know, great. as you see, I've got a I've got a Raven behind me. So I was able to blow the plugin up really big, wonderful, and you know, touch all the features. But let's say your screen real estate is small, and you're dealing with like a 13 inch laptop. You okay, can at the sque- moment, like you are at the <laughs> so okay. So you can <laughs> squeeze down the GUI so you can squeeze get it on the screen if right. it's too big, or maybe you need to blow it up because you're looking at such a small screen. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you caught on to those other features, the uh, the HQ feature and the yeah, AGC feature. That. Yeah, yeah, that's I've, I I, en- I enjoyed those. Now, the AGC is a really good idea because the, it's you're moving fast and you want to try and rebalance your gain. It's nice to have them do that. I noticed that we were we were going through some free plugins the other day, and like the soft tube plugin is a really good free plugin that you can just put across. You know the little soft tube one. It's one button that says saturation. That's great when you're dealing with very digital source stuff. I, I was recommending to people just to literally put that soft tube across a lot of very thin digital stuff. However, mm-hmm. the only problem with that is there's no way to balance the gain output. Um, so uh-huh. you can't really insert it in the middle of other things unless, you know, because what I was trying to do was put that plug in on a vocal and drive the vocal but if I put it anywhere, I wanted to put it a little later because it seemed to sound great there, but it just sent my gain through the roof and I was clipping everywhere. Um, so that AGC is very smart. Um, it, 
will save possibly, you know, 10 minutes of rebalancing stuff and everything. I, I love that kind of feature. I think that's the thing about this. They're taking tube style, you know, and transformer based compressors. They're doing great emulations and they're sticking all these little modern features. I think for me, um, the one thing sonically that makes it probably superior to many other things, honestly, is the drive control because with the different, different um, saturation plugins out there, they all have different characteristics, but most of them, their characteristics lean towards only or mainly driving the high end. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't do that. This is all about like fattening stuff up. And if there's one thing that I think if we're living in a digital world that people need more of is more girth and more, you know, because that's what tape gave us. That's what transformers and stuff so i think that is a really good function when i put that drive up there was never a point even at maximum that it seemed like it was bad yeah i know i was like wow how much can i get away with i here? know that's like a I, huge I, I do want to counter that though there is one plugin out there that i don't think really um saturates the high end uh, as much i think and and brings more low mid to the to the picture is the massey tape head plugin yeah i have it. i like that and, and just even on uh, the one setting, it's a very simple plug-in, but on the, on the setting of one can take a very thin, uh, poorly, not poorly recorded, but thin source and give yeah. it a little more girth. And yeah. I find that the, the, the feature we're talking about here on, on, on the Clang, Clanghelm, 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 yes. Clanghelm, Clanghelm yeah. is uh, a lot like that. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and, and in the, the free soft tubes defense, there's actually, and I do love it. The reason why I loved it is it's a three-way switch. There's like a, there's a high, there's a high distortion boost. If you go up in the middle, it's kind of balanced. But if you flick it down on the soft tube one, it actually um, just overdrives the low end really nicely. That's why I was recommending it to people because, and then this is the first plugin since then that seems to feel like that. I do like the Massey tape head stuff. That's been out for a while. I think between that and I've always been a big fan, uh, uh, unashamedly been a fan of, of Mac DSP plugins. They're to me oh, yeah. a very musical. I use Wave plugins a lot because of, you know, detail work. If I want to get a frequency and boost and cut it, you know, you can get in there and surgically do all kinds of great stuff. And the Wave stuff, I, I'm never going to knock it. It's very well designed. But for for what I love about the Mac DSP, and I think that this is falling into this kind of world, is that kind of just – big knob feeling of going in and turning a knob. Wow, that sounds better. Because yeah, that's yeah. what it's like, kids. You know, kids like yeah. all of us, that's what it's like to be in a real studio. You lean over to a Poltec and pull a big knob. You don't, you're not getting there with like 18 different tiny sliders and, and, and all this fiddliness. Because uh -huh. when we're working fast and we're surrounded by musicians, um, you need to just kind of like grab something and go brighter, you know. Um, yeah. You know, and so I... It's a pretty outstandingly good plugin. Um, and thanks for all your detailed work on that. I, uh, I, 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 uh, I like all of those observations. Yeah. Well, you know, I just I I bought it and and put it up and immediately. It's great when you you are currently working on something and you can say, all right, well, let's give this a real world test. Right. And then when you put it on something, you think, oh, I could leave this. This is good. This is yeah. It, you know, and it's hard because there's just so much. There's so many plugins out there. Um, I think this plugin, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money, is a great plugin. But great. its cost is definitely a bonus. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, in in a world of three to you know twenty five hundred dollar plugins, sure. to get a plugin for under thirty dollars, yeah, you crazy. know, or under thirty euros, I mean, it's just like. That's kind of a no-brainer. Yep, I agree. I and think if it's, it's wonderful. If it sucked, I would say, well, you get what you pay for. But in this case, you get far yeah. more than you pay for. No, well, you, you and I talked about this in, in the podcast. I mean, we, we're cut from a similar cloth. I mean, I, I, I want to know everything has a purpose. It's like there's the things that I kind of like endorse and talk about are usually because like, you know, we were talking about like the Lewitt mics. The reason why I like the Lewitt mic is because, yeah, I was asked yesterday why. I was like, well... If I'm in a studio and I need a pair of something just to record anything as a pair of, it's probably in most situations a pair of 87s or a pair of 414s. Mm -hmm. 
And why? Because they don't color the sound that much. I know that when I go into a situation, you know, I love 67s, I love 47s, I love all these amazing microphones. But if I put a pair of 67s on something, it's because I want a certain sound. I put a pair of 47s and then it's tied into that, which is great. But if I put a pair of 87s on anything or a pair of 414s on it, with exceptions, but most of the time, I'm going to pull it up and go, oh, what do I want to do? Do I want to make these darker? Do I want to make these lighter? I like equipment like that. However, one problem with 87s and even 414s is they're expensive. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot – and the, people say, well, why do you like – why do you talk about the Lua? I was like, because an LCT 550 is like 600 bucks, And they don't pay me to say that. And a pair of those is my same mindset. I go, I need a pair of matched – good sounding condensers on something for 1200 bucks. I've got a pair which gets me either one 414 or a half of the 87. So to me, this plugin is that world. It's like fits into, you know, like my only question is though, cause I didn't do this. What's this processing power? If we wanted to put this across a lot of inputs, I didn't check that out. Did you get a chance to check? that? Well, I'm glad you bring that up because I notoriously am behind on computer speed you know we all are. you know i don't have a i don't have a black trash can mac okay Neither i've got I. i've got uh in fact i i bought it used from a a friend of mine my friend uh, john green at infrasonic uh there in la right um i bought his old mac tower that's i think it's from 2006 he sold it to me for 500 bucks with no drives in it and i put a solid state drive in it and it nice. instantly brought the thing to life right and I and I I don't run an HDX system. I run just plain Jane Pro Tools. And I did find that in a in a session that's got about I don't know uh, slightly under thirty tracks maybe. Right. I was running into some some errors when I had like four or five of them going. Right. It was causing causing the Mac to go ah. Right. But but if you take off the HQ button. Or if you, sorry, if you turn on the HQ button, that pushes it over the top. So if you want to run more of them, you have to turn the HQ button off if you're running a slower Mac. Um, or you just have to balance, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of other native plugins running on here. Right. Uh, so that's that's part of the issue. But yeah, um, I, but I didn't I didn't start this mix from scratch. I actually substituted sure. uh, the Klinghelm in for some other other things I was experimenting with in rough mixes and thought, okay, let's pull that out, put this in. So, um, yeah, it's it in HQ mode. I think it can be pretty hungry in right. non HQ mode. I think you can get away with more in instances of it. That's good. That's, that's good to know. So Matt, that was fantastic. Thank you, Warren. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun talking to you because we're, you know, as we, we were talking about before, we're cut from a similar cloth we uh, we definitely benefited from some some of the uh, the wonders of being in the music industry in the '90s when there was money flying out of people's ears, seemingly. Oh yeah. Um, but we've also seen what it's like to be, you know, a guy like hustling in the business, and like we still do, and 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 make a living doing this. And uh, I do. I think you know, as we're agreeing, I think that plug in is one of those things that fits into our philosophy. It brings in. It, it, it's a lot of bang for the buck, mm -hmm. but that is selling it short. That's like saying a Rode microphone is the best microphone you can get for the money. Yeah, it is, but it's also saying it's kind of inexpensive. This is something that if we were paying $150 for, we'd be saying it's a good plug-in. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So that, so this is a $150 kind of standalone plug-in for me that's 30 bucks. basically. Yeah, and, and he does say on the website it's an introductory price, so – if if you're interested ah, in the plugin, introductory price. I would go out and get it before he raises the price. Well, wonderful talking to you. I really appreciate it. Was it was great to see you, and uh, yeah, look forward to the next one. Yep, we'll do another one sooner rather than later. Sounds great, Thanks, man. Mate. Thank you. Great, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have a marvelous time um, trying out this plugin. They do a junior, uh, which as Matt was pointing out, doesn't have those features that we like at the bottom where you click at the bottom and you've got the drive and the hi-fi to so dark sound. I really like turning it all, all the way to the left and using the dark sound. That's just me. And I love the drive, how it's driving some of those lows predominantly. And of course, that sidechain function is pretty special. For me, that function is fantastic and is definitely worth the 
less than $30 that's going to cost you. However, like um, I think Matt was bringing up, we it's an introductory price. So, you know, I honestly would give it a five-star um I give it a five star review. I think at thirty bucks, it feels like a hundred and fifty dollar compressor, hundred and fifty dollar plug in. It's great for your arsenal. Um, go out and buy it while you still can at that price. It's really, really special. And thanks again to Matt Working Class Audio for getting another perspective. I think it's great to have another person's uh, view. And um, thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you have a marvelous time with this plug in or and watching this video. As ever, please leave some questions and comments. Let's have a great discussion about this. I know this has been reviewed by a few people before, but hopefully we've given you some new perspective on it. And um, thanks for watching, and I look forward to hearing your comments.